two possibilities exist. Either we are alone in the universe, or we are not. Both are equally terrifying. Arthur C. Clarke Ma'am, I've collated all the entries, messages, and recordings found from the CR box and security flight recorder of the Lockhart Reed Company Orbital Station Concord. Beginning with this first session, I shall be detailing the events surrounding it. Built on the 18th of August, 2145, at Cygnipus Dry Dock 1, Orbital Station Concord was put into service on the 18th of December that same year, fixed in an L-point orbit above transport wormhole designated I-87. Its function was to act as a pit stop and way station for cargo vessels and trading ships traveling to and from Cygnipus. The station was composed of living quarters, a medical ward, recreation hall, cafeteria, operation deck, administrative office, docking bays, and an observation deck, all powered and maintained by its E-20 Vance engines manufactured by Lockhart Reed. It was also equipped with a small space shuttle for emergency and evacuation purposes. With a typical crew complement of 14 to 18, Concorde's shift length for crews was six months. By its seventh year in operation, the 13th crew arrived at the station on the 3rd of January, 2152. Consisting of 11 working staff and one civilian, Concorde's management was given to Avil Nikolaevich Toprov, former administrator of Concorde's sister station, Entente. The station lost communications on the 17th of March. When the next ship came through I-87 on the 23rd after waiting for a wormhole storm to dissipate, they found the station destroyed from an explosion believed to have originated from its engines. Very little physical evidence remains, and all onboard personnel are presumed dead. The way station. For this first session, to contextualize the events surrounding the orbital station and its destruction, I will be documenting audio messages and reports before and just after the crew's arrival at Concord on the 3rd of January. The first entry was recovered from an audio logbook belonging to engineer Kelson Rickey, one of the few personnel that had not worked at Concord previously. Hey Lucia, been a while. Hope you're doing okay. Sorry that it's been a while. Didn't mean to. Yeah. I got a new job. Off-world this time. One of the company wormhole stations. Simple engineering job, six months. Should be okay, I think. Martina put in a good word for me. You remember her? She's nice. I think she tried flirting with me, so, uh... Guess we'll see where that goes in six months. I can't imagine it'll go anywhere, really. I spoke to Mom a week ago. She's doing okay. We don't speak much since, uh... Since Dad. It's not easy, you know. Yeah. You know. Report any protester activity. Any connection with a protester or protester affiliate is a crime. See it. We chatted on the Nexus. Uh, she's on another planet, so... Yeah. She's doing fine there, from what I can tell. Thanks for that. I think I need to get away from people. For a while. Not that there won't be people at the station, but... Yeah. Less people. 
It's what I need, really. Perspective. Perspective. Ugh. What am I even talking about? I've arranged someone to water the plants for me. One of the neighbors. And I can't take Barney with me, so... I'll leave him with someone, too. I would have left him with you, but... Yeah. <laughs> Leaving tomorrow. Got everything packed and ready. I'll make sure to keep messaging you when I get there. Hopefully this fucking rain will die down next morning. See you soon, Luce. Happy New Year. The second entry was an audio recording requisitioned from Lockhart Reed's security archive, belonging to Concord Administrator Toprov, dated the first, made in his out-of-shift office on planet New Mercury. Мой получий смену в Конкорде, а не в Вентанте. Очевидно, стресски, что обед он и шнак. Happy New Year. Скоро я свеку. By myself again, as to be expected. Been given a shift to Concord, rather than Вентанте. A shake-up, apparently. Whatever that means. Trouble with the protesters, likely. LR types are such fucking pushovers. Unlike Antanta. The sister station is a three-week trip to the nearest planet, Signopus. We'll be getting there from the other side of the wormhole. Day trip at most. At least I'll be able to say hello to a familiar face there at Antanta. I wonder how she's doing. Given the skeleton crew this time as well. For all the fucking good it'll do me. Let's see. Yeah. Got Tilson, so I know we'll all be in safe hands. Though how we'll manage with just two security details is beyond me. Especially with the protests last year. But, Tilson's the best of the best. Jago, part of the Concord shift previously. Highly experienced. Yeah, she looks fine. Two medical officers, some German... Huh. Army medic. Uh, and some Brit. Engineers, let's see now. Four. Only four. God, four. Two have been on Concord before. One's here from the previous shift. A very keen engineer then. Two newcomers then. One on second, man from a terraforming operation. One working for LR at Signapus. Apple. <sighs> and then we have a civilian, Professor Yoshida. Five months stay, studying the wormhole apparently. Don't know why she settled with us, but company orders. Relative of hers is a minor shareholder. So, that's uh, something to think about. Company's rife with it from what I've seen. So, that's my lot for the next six months. Ah, happy New Year. Ah, Dermo! Yeah. We now move on to the CR box and flight recorder pieces recovered from the debris. The first relevant chronological entry was a group recording within Concord's cafeteria, approximately an hour after all the crew had arrived on the station on the 3rd of January. Is it on? Yeah, we're live. Right. Thanks, Jago. Tilson? <clears throat> all right, everyone. Settle down, please. Right. Thanks for coming down. Hope you've all settled into your quarters well. I know they're not the biggest. As some of you know, I'm Ramsey Tilson, head of security on Concord. It's my job to keep you and the interests behind Concord safe. Under me are Mitch Wheeler and Bridger. Rosie, you met them when we boarded. You've all been briefed on your roles, so we'll skip the pep talk. 
Just want to dispel what you're all thinking. We're not here to be some kind of thought police or anything like that. Yeah, guys, uh, we're just here to make sure you don't fuck up. And if you fuck up... <laughs> <laughs> Rosie. Just kidding, kidding. Jeez. All right. Okay, but really, we're here in case you have a problem with other crewmates, passengers, or passing visitors. If that happens, you come to us at the operation deck and you report it. I'm going to hand the mic to our administrator and company rep, Avil Toporov. He'll talk to you about everything else. Woo! Yeah! Woo! Thank you. I'd like to first off say that Lockhart are really grateful for your willingness to come in at such a short notice. I know that some of you sacrificed some valuable time to spend the next six months here, and I personally am grateful for that. It could be worse, right guys? <laughs> Jesus, is that your answer for everything, Hatch? Christ. When I'm done, please, Hatcher. Anyway, you already know who I am. I spoke to each of you on Nexus, so it's time to get to know you. To my left is Freya Jago. Most of you already know her. She is our head of engineering and will be responsible for Concord's smooth running and maintenance. If you have any problems with the station, you talk to her. Thanks, Avil. Hello. Second time here, final time too. Don't worry, folks, you won't have an eagle eye over you. As long as you don't get on my bad side, we'll get on like a house on fire. Though, not literally, because we'd all be dead. <laughs> right. Now for the underlings. Under her are previous Concord engineers, George Armitage. If you would. Uh, hey, good to be here. <laughs> uh, you can call me George or Armitage. I uh, don't really care which one you use. And Jack Hatcher. Hi all. Also absolutely fantastic to be here too. You're the one that's staying on from the previous shift, right Jack? Guilty as charged. You can just call me Hatcher too. I can say already, you lot are a much happier bunch than the last people. Why stay on for the year? Ah, well, you know, personal business. Nothing much back home. Right. We also have some newcomer engineers as well. Ida Thoreau. Ida. Oh, sorry. Hi. Some of you may have heard one of our new engineers is from a terraforming operation. Ida is that very one. Really? Huh. Well, it's nothing too big. Sorry to disappoint. What's the specifics? The Mars colonies have been testing terraforming for some time now. That's why it was originally. It was nice there. Enough. It paid. That's the main thing in this economy, no? Always wanted to go there. <laughs> Not with Annabeth, you aren't. Well, once the six months are over, I'll hopefully be back there. You all can visit me if you want. <laughs> I think I and our other newcomer is Kilsen Ricky from Signapus. Hey. Must be quite the step from planet work to station work. Uh, well, work is work, I guess. <laughs> oh, meant to that. Work is work. Oh, that's perfect. I'm using that. Is that copyrighted? Come on, Hatch. <laughs> what? what? It's just, it's just, um... Ah, For Sawbones, we have our head medical officer, Dr. Mona Brown. How do you do? Any physical or mental problems, just let her know. Preferably the former. You'll find me in the medical ward, obviously. Don't come to me with paper cuts or funny bones. And don't even think of asking for sleep pills. And our assistant medical officer, Dr. Laura Scannell. Oh, that's me. <laughs> uh, hello. It's a pleasure to meet you all. This is my first assignment on a station, so I'm quite anxious to get to know you all and, and make sure... Them. I'm not. Sit down. Likewise, any problems, let her know too. We also have a civilian in our numbers. Professor Yoshida, if you will. Hello, everyone. Professor Takara Yoshida will be staying on Concord for five months to study the wormhole. We have orders from LR to make sure she has a place to stay and make her feel welcome. Thank you for having me. I'll be sure not to disturb your own work. What's your interest in the wormhole, if you don't mind me asking? Oh, I'm writing an article on the physical properties of wormholes. Gravity, density, it's not really simple stuff, I'm afraid. You can count me out of that subject. Now that we're all acquainted, oh, it's time to get a, acquainted nice with the hear. basics of the station. Working shifts and... Mm. Hey, come on. Has to be done. Habits to undo. Now to start with, you'll all be given your shared devices. Tilson. Here you go. Thank you. 
Now, company studio? regulations require old crew you? members to wear I these at all times. Sorry, say ah? Camera recorder. Bit of a pointless shortening. We work with what we have, Ricky. As I was saying, Thanks. you're required to wear these at all times. Cheers. This is for Three security, you. legal, Thanks. archival, Three and personal you. purposes. You, we'll still need to wear them all the time. Thanks, you're not contractually Man, obligated to record hey. at all times. You need to make sure your CR device is recording when you are working or eating in the cafeteria. And when we sleep? Obviously not, Hatcher. What do you think we want? Eight hours of you doing a motorboat impression? You do not need to record when on breaks or in your rooms. You'll also be given these wrist comb links. These are used for communication between crewmates. Unlike the Shi'ar devices, these are pretty long-lasting. You won't need to charge them. Now, we'll move on to shift work. The uh, Jago. You can switch that off. We're all registered. The next recording was an audio message sent by Concord security guard Mitchell Wheeler to his wife Annabeth, dated the 3rd of January. It was obtained from her inbox with her permission. Ah, 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 there we go. <clears throat> right, sorry, uh... Hey, sweetie, I'm at Concord, as you can probably gather from the return address. <laughs> um, sorry, yeah, uh, I'm at Concord. Met the rest of the crew, seem a nice bunch. Also, guess what? I'm paired with Rosie. You remember her, right? Uh, met at Dennis's 29th? Yeah, her. Quite a coincidence, really. Only found out today. Also, found out that it'll only be us and the boss, Tilson, for security. I know what you're thinking, but it's fine. There's only 11 crewmates for this shift. It's a bit small, I know, but there's hardly any danger if worst becomes worse. Well, uh, 12 if you count this professor we've got on board. Tilson said not to expect any trouble from the protesters. LR hasn't reported any incidents from them since last year's. So, nothing to worry about on that side. Anyway, Tilson is probably one of the most skilled people I've ever met, sweetie. I read her portfolio. Former private soldier for LR, knows Topper off. He's our, uh, administrator here. So she's someone to depend on. She's much like you in that respect. I know that... I know that it's going to be hard for you in the next few months, what with... Yeah. I'm sorry that I got called away. I thought that with the new year, I'd be able to... <sighs> you got the list of names I left on the counter for you? Do tell me what you think. I'm dying to know. She's, uh... She's gonna be beautiful. I know it. I've got the due date saved. I'm gonna make sure Tilson knows. <clears throat> Hopefully they can connect me on the Nexus here so that I can be with you there. Delayed, I know, but at least I can see you again. In fact, send me a message as soon as you finish watching this. I need to see your face again, sweetie. Oh, uh, on an unrelated note, Rosie and I got issued our bolt pistols. <laughs> I know, you're fascinated by them. Not like the regular sort you get on Corydalus. Uh, these don't puncture the hull of ships or stations. Designed to only pierce flesh. <laughs> uh, sorry. A bit graphic, I know. But it helps on ships with a thin material separating you and... Sh sh vacuum. Hey, Mitch. Dinner's getting ready in the cafeteria. You coming? Oh, uh, yeah. I'll be a minute. What you doing? Just, uh, getting acquainted with the recorder. Oh, really? Anything else? <sighs> no, nothing else. Doesn't look like nothing to me. Sending a message to someone? Uh, yes. Someone... close. Yes. Hey, Annabeth. How are you? Hope the bun in the oven is going... Ah, All right, what? Rosie, vamoose, skedaddle. Aw, say hi to the dogs for Go me. Go on, get out of here. <laughs> all right, all right, Mitch, I'm going. Well, whenever you're ready. Not until you let me finish this. Hey, don't be too long. I hear they got good grub. Anyway, 
Bye, Annabeth. Bye, 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 bye. <laughs> uh, sorry about her. I'll make sure to lock my door next time. Uh, huh. I don't think there's anything more to say. Uh, yeah. I'll send another message once I get your reply. Love you, sweetie. Mwah. The next recording was the first entry of an audio diary authored by Dr. Laura Scannell, Assistant Medical Officer on Concord. <clears throat> January 4th, 2152. No patients thus far at Concord, thankfully. Though my colleague Dr. Brown, a German army medic and my direct superior here, assures me rather sharply that we'll be seeing them none too soon. Dr. Brown is quite erudite, better trained, but she is not one for small talk. Nor am I, really, but I prefer us not to have any antagonisms. She's an opportunity to learn a great deal from. Anyway, on to the day's work. Uh, not much in the way of treating anyone, though one of the engineers, Thoreau, came in for a headache pill, likely from the trip over. It was quite noisy. But then there's the engine room, but I'll get to that. Dr. Brown has me spending most of my time doing admin in the medical ward. My duties are mostly just sorting supplies and tablets, menial work, if anything. The ward doesn't have much in the way of machinery or even major surgery equipment. When I asked Toporov, uh, Concord's administrator, he said that no major injuries were to be expected during a six-month shift. The Russian rather proudly said that no one had ever been severely injured during their time on Concord. Dr. Brown was rather sceptical of that claim, <laughs> and for good reason. On one of my breaks, I went down to engineering. <laughs> the noise. Absolutely deafening. The smell was the worst. Can't imagine how Thoreau or the others can survive down there. I have no doubt we'll be seeing one of them soon enough. The CR devices are a neat addition I found to the work we're doing here. I mean, not only is it an elegant security measure, but it also eradicates so many problems. Fights, for example. I've had to treat wounds from many a disgruntled worker, and these CR things would help a dozen to prevent fights like that happening, and not in the least from the punishment that would happen after. I have noticed that, that Dr. Brown hasn't been wearing hers when she's working. I did have a think to maybe tell Topper of, but I wouldn't want her to be even less enthusiastic with me. I might just remind her. Gently. It's not what I expected, this. I'm more of a simple assistant than an actual medical professional. But then again, I'm in space. Growing up on Sol for practically all of my life, it's, <laughs> it's hard to imagine what it would be like on a station such as this. I'll certainly be enjoying every second of it. Oh, that reminds me, I do need to go to that observation deck. The wormhole was pretty astounding from the shuttle ride through. Scuttle! Scuttle! Oh, God, what now? Yes, Dr. Brown? Come out here, I need your help with something. Now? Yes, now. Honest. All right. <sighs> Dr. Laura Scannell, ending recording. The next recording was one of the first CR device recordings taken from the drive recovered from the wreckage. Due to damage sustained from the station's destruction and general low quality of the devices, this recording is scratchy and, at times, unintelligible. This next entry comes from the CR of Concord's head of engineering, Freya Jago, dated the 4th of January. Oh, Matej, you down there! Yeah! Me and Hatcher are calibrating the couplings! We picked up a phone! Right, where's Ricky? Last time check, the control guys! Right, thanks. Ricky? 
Oh, hey, Skipper. Armitage told me you're up here. Yeah, reporting on the couplings. Making sure they get the fault from the panel. Good, good. Just wanted to have a chat. Oh, what is it? We've got our first ship in a few days. So soon? Thought we had a couple weeks before a scheduled dock. New Year boom. LR's picking up Signipus's trade, according to Toporov. Jesus, how much is it costing them? Enough to buy a planet and then some. Can't say the protesters are very happy about it. Word on the grapevine is LR is sending a private army there for any possible protester activity. You know about them? I know enough. Freighter? Yeah, the Caliban. The crew will be staying a night and then leaving in the morning once we've got refueling done. Toporov's going to announce it this evening at eat. Tell Armitage and Hatcher when they're done, and Thoreau, wherever she is. Best if we engineers get ready beforehand. Right, gotcha. Let me know about the coupling fault as well, remember? Right, let's get it. <laughs> Belay that. there. What's up, boss? Need another word with you. Something's just come up. Important? Yes. Just get up here. Right on my way. There was no audio or visual record of a meeting between Avil Toprov and Freya Jago from the 4th of January. It can be assumed that Concord's administrator purposefully failed to document the meeting for currently unknown reasons. Are there any later recordings that indicate what their meeting entailed? Yes, ma'am. Play them. Ma'am, I think that it would be beneficial for posterity reasons that we keep this archive in a purely chronological order. Very well. Proceed. The final recording for this session belongs to Professor Takara Yoshida, physicist and civilian on Concord, dated 4th of January. あさと先輩、私は1日中展望台で過ごしました。疲れているところの騒ぎじゃないです。こんなに宇宙で過ごした時間が最長です。今までまだ調整しています。あさと先輩。I spent my entire day on the observation deck. To say that I'm tired is quite the understatement. This is the longest I've spent in space. I'm still adjusting. Administrator Toporov assured me that the artificial gravity is state of the art, whatever that means. <sighs> I am a physicist, so artificial gravity is like saying you can make a bike fly. We just spin very fast, is all. Doesn't make my task any easier. The wormhole, designated I-87, is what you told me. A volatile wormhole. Not that some wormholes aren't, of course. All of them are. They fluctuate between changing structural density, violent lightning-esque storms, and passive, almost gentle states. The patterns of these fluctuations is what I am here for. With I-87 used for passing ships, it is most important that they do not get caught in the violent state. The times when it is safe for anything to pass through is, more often than not, purely 50-50. Most of the time, craft simply wait for one side of the wormhole to exhibit a gentle state, and await whatever state is on the other side. In the two days I've been here, I've been unable to discern any noticeable pattern in the violent and gentle states. Asato-senpai, the closest I could get to any type of pattern were two violent storms that lasted close to an hour, but had a difference of 5 minutes and 12 seconds. Storms can range from minutes to days. It's the whole reason for these way stations. Apart from that and the violent bouts of space sickness, I believe that I've adjusted well here. The crew, uh, engineers, security people, and medical staff mostly keep to themselves. Though Thoreau, one of the engineers here, has expressed a curiosity in my work. I gave her vague details, considering the importance of this project. 
She's a woman of science in her own way, she told me. Thoreau worked on a terraforming project, though was similarly vague, much to our amusement. Administrator Toporov has asked me to report to him every day about my progress, and I'm not eager to disappoint him. He rather frightens me, to be honest. Reminds me of you a little, Asato-senpai. It's late. I'll send another message tomorrow. Hopefully we'll get some progress soon. I have five months. I'm sure there'll be something. Bye. During the coalition process, ma'am, I sought out the Asato professor Yoshida spoke of, finding an academic who bore the same name and had known her. I had done this in order to find a cleaner copy of Yoshida's recordings due to the aforementioned damage to the CR box. However, when I visited Professor Yoshida Asato's residence on the planet Lagatha, I found that the house had been ransacked, and any trace of Professor Yoshida's messages to him gone. Most concerning was he had disappeared also. None of his neighbors had seen nor heard from him recently. From Asado's workplace at Lagatha University, I had discovered that his colleagues had been told he had taken an abrupt leave of absence. Do you have reason to believe it was the work of protesters? I doubt it, ma'am. Why? Well, I didn't see Fuck Lockhart Reed painted in red on the walls for a start. I see. You think that it may have been done by the company? It's a distinct possibility, ma'am. I would keep such possibilities to yourself for now. Understand? Yes, ma'am. Good. Then I think that'll be all for today, doll. We'll continue tomorrow. Ma'am. <clears throat> First session of Concord Investigation concluded. Agent Hannah Dahl, SI 1.2. Signing out. Nicole Tuttle as Hannah Dahl. Daphne Nitsuga as Professor Takara Yoshida. Elizabeth Plant as Dr. Laura Scannell. Odd Andrews as Mitch Wheeler. Bean R. as Kelson Ricky. Zach Cipriano as Jack Hatcher. Saito Kabiyama as Avel Tapara. Catherine Ann Brasto as Edith Thoreau. Adigail Stewart as Rosie Bridger. Kessie Ruliniki as Dr. Mona Brown. Eleanor Anwin as Freya Jago. Aaron B. Lillis as Ramsey Tilson. Mike Joseph as George Armitage. Meredith Lisa Jones as Superior. Written and directed by Elliot Summerfield. Additional mixing by Catherine Stanley. The Way Station, composed and performed by Detinda Shimiso. Cover art by Paul Ignacio. Wired Cowslip Podcast.